very good morning so today is the fourth day of this lecture lecture season and uh, this guys in the second batch so very good morning thank you very much for joining let me confirm with the people that whether uh, i am visible or not yeah so uh, let me then open the presentation first So please put uh, your message in comment. Very good morning. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So uh, okay so uh, today i'll be talking about this uh, uh, one second Only I have to, I think, uh, uh, this maximize the screen, right? Yeah, once again. So you can open this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You can do it. Okay. So, today I'll be mainly talking about this uh, another species. So basically what I am trying to do, uh, giving you the glimpse of uh, these two species mainly uh, on which uh, uh, presently uh, INCOIS is also uh, involved for uh, development of uh, these uh, operational advisories on Hilsa and Sardin. So yesterday in the perspective of fisheries oceanography, I have discussed uh, uh, on the uh, species on uh, Hilsa. So uh, let me uh, today discuss on Indian oil sardine uh, fishery. So mostly majority of the pelagic catch comes from southwest coast in the Kerala region. So um, uh, here you can uh, see that uh, this region are, are in the red in this uh, map actually i have highlighted this is a uh, majority of the fishermen uh, are from kerala also involved kerala karnataka regions are also involved in this uh, uh, fishing so uh, let me discuss uh, about this uh, species first the landings of the indian oil sardine this is basically is sardinella which is in the clupidae form uh, clupidae actually a family along the uh, southeastern arabian sea are about 43.8 percent of total indian oil sardine production the annual landing of this species exhibit large scale variability with prolonged year of surplus or deficit landing without uh, ident landing without uh, identified reason what drives the variability so basically we have seen if we plot the long term data so uh, there are uh, yearly variabilities are there also seasonal uh, variabilities are there so you can see here in this uh, slide actually from 1960 to 2020 even up to 2020 actually plotted these uh, landings so there are huge variability in year wise also or seasonal wise so here you can see the southeast arabian and see i have highlighted here uh, this is basically a surface chlorophyll a uh, map which is a composite map 
1998 to 2007 it's a basic basically average chlorophyll concentrations on on oceans actually global oceans it is showing and here are basically all upwelling zones uh, where actually upwelling zone where uh, sardine fishery is popular uh, so those things are are highlighted so um, in the green deep green part here if you see the color bar so here you can see this is the color bar of the chlorophyll concentration so green means nearly about 1 uh, mg per meter cube of concentration is showing here so uh, southeast arabian sea is also uh, one of the world major upwelling zone and uh, one of the most productive region of the uh, world's uh, ocean actually now here if we are concentrating on this uh, southeastern part of this uh, arabian sea let us discuss actually um, first how this uh, flow uh, is uh, happening here so this is the work done by smita et al schematic representations of different upwelling zones basically classified accordingly to the formation of mechanism here you can see this class classifications of upwelling zones are there basically 1 2 and 3 3 boxes actually here so arrows along on the coast represent coastal kelvin waves so these these are the arrows basically coastal kelvin waves actually from bay of bengal it is entering towards this uh, arabian sea so westward and the direction these are the rossby rossby waves uh, which is uh, predominantly in this uh, uh, third uh, area uh, third box actually so westward directions black arrows depicts rossby waves the phase velocity of which decrease uh, decreases moving from equator upwelling at area 1 strongly wind driven here basically upwellings are very much uh, wind wind driven actually and strong area 2 is a shadow zone with weak wind driven upwelling so here basically the uh, upwellings are her uh, sa uh, shadow zone basically at area 3 is the result of remote forcing as well as as a wind trace so based on this actually uh, um, this uh, um, they have differentiated this entire uh, coastal area of the southwest coastal area uh, of uh, india into three upwelling zone so 8 degree north 8 degree uh, north and 9 uh, degree north represent the shadow zone so here basically the shadow zones exist uh, to the influence of the remote forcing on the upwelling so moderate to o2 relative intense uh, upwelling occurs along the kollam to mangalore coast basically it is 9 to 13 degree if uh, this uh, north latitude uh, due to the combined actions of longshore wind stress the coastal trapped Kel kelvin waves and offshore propagations of this uh, of this rossby uh, of uh, propagation of these rossby waves so north of this 13 degree north to uh, 15 degree north upwelling is weak so here above this region upwelling is uh, is very much weak and uh, mm, this uh, wind stress and closely confined to the coastal bed this is also very closely confined uh, this uh, this area here also this uh, bathymetry contours are also given so 2000 meter bathymetry contour this is 1000 meter bathymetry contour so uh, this uh, predominantly uh, as, as per uh, references so um, this sardine species mostly dominated in this uh, area only self break up to self break region so here uh, again uh, based on this upwelling zone actually the um, uh, uh, monthly chlorophyll from the satellite is plotted here so here you can see in the month of june there is initiations of the upwelling and the chlorophyll also concentration increases however in the july followed by the july so this um, uh, actually area gradually towards the north that uh, concentration is uh, um, there and in the month of august 
so you can see the increase of the uh, chlorophyll concentration in the month of September it is uh, fully um, uh, actually a lot of uh, chlorophyll concentration is there so as it is uh, moving towards this post monsoon on time so it is basically the data plotted from the june to september based on the uh, uh, modis aqua and uh, four year climatology data 2003 to 2006 so here this is a uh, another her work uh, from a cmfri and uh, so they are her basically dr grinson george is involved in that so they have represented actually uh, how this uh, disappearance of sardine souls and appearance of sardine souls happening in uh, this coastal region of uh, kerala and uh, karnataka so as per her, that actually you can see this is with the onset of monsoon there is a tendency of uh, this uh, adult fish moving towards this north so and uh, this is a review of all work uh, so here you come hornell work and their uh, panikkar work is also involved into that according to that actually this species with the onset of monsoon it is going towards up and again post monsoon time onwards it is actually coming down and however these are basically disappearing disappearing of sardine souls so towards the coast in the during the june that migration happens towards the north and the post monsoon after that actually so gradually the disappearance occurs and they are moving away from this self break region so this is the self break it is the 2000 meter bathymetry contour actually so mostly our continental self is in this region only so uh, so vijinjam vijinjam onwards uh, there is a movement up to uh, vangurla so after that actually again disappearance so it means nearly about 15 degree north 15 degree north up to that actually um, uh, this migrations happen beyond that as uh, dr smita also told in her uh, if you can correlate so uh, it, the, this 15 degree north this is the picture where the upwelling zones are, are described here so beyond beyond that these upwellings are very 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 minimal so um, uh, and if we are uh, relating with this uh, migration pattern also be beyond 15 degree north this migration is not happening so somehow upwelling is having a strong uh, relation with this species basically so upwelling and uh, the followed by the chlorophyll concentration is uh, one of the major uh, actually uh, ecological indicator towards prediction of these species migrations or appearance of these uh, sardine souls or disappearance so from april to september just uh, here to summarize uh, what uh, doctor uh, in this earlier uh, this migration pattern it is written so from april to uh, september the souls of spawner and the juvenile migrates from offshore to inshore and uh, so september april to september means that is the time basically southwest monsoon uh, um, actually that onset of monsoon after that onset of monsoon it depends actually so if um, onset of monsoon is earlier so if with it actually uh, migration starts if it is delayed then that is also impacting the uh, soul appearance in this uh, monsoon time also mm -hmm. So from April to September, the souls of the spawner and the juvenile migrate from offshore to inshore all along the west coast following the onset of bloom. So uh, northward migration of sardine happens steadily during southwest monsoon period and retrogressions from north to south in the uh, northeast monsoon time so northeast monsoon time actually that retrogressions uh, of this particular uh, species also starts and they disappear from the self break region and move away from the coast 
Sardine performs normal uh, migrations uh, from offshore to coastal water and vice versa, considering um, uh, with the customary wind conditions, it is uh, also uh, a reference from the Hornell and a gradual increase in temperature within the range of 26 to 28 degrees centigrade favorable for the inshore migrations uh, of the juveniles. So 26 degree to 28 degree centigrade is favorable and uh, with the increasing temperature above 29 degree centigrade during March to May they disappear to, to deeper water. They disappear to the deeper, deeper water. So uh, yesterday uh, actually after the class uh, I was uh, checking uh, the um, comments from uh, what the comments came during this class so what i found uh, one uh, person there is a comment that uh, what is the suitable temperature and salinity for hilsa species uh, actually um, spawning so it that was discussed that time the salinity regarding the salinity so fresh water is essential however her, uh, the important thing was 20 uh, that uh, temperature so this is the temperature mostly this type of species are small pelagic species are basically preferring 26 to 28 degree degree centigrade so and it is very much closely related with uh, this uh, physical oceanography also so there is a uh, there also what happens that 20 around this 27 degree centigrade temperature or phytoplankton's blooming also it is a conducive air temperature for uh, phytoplankton also if it is going beyond it is severely impacting the climatology of the ocean also there is a impact on on uh, rainfall so beyond 28 degree is centigrade temperature also and uh, chlorophyll concentrations and lot of uh, lot of uh, actually ecological indicator or ecological uh, these parameters disturbs beyond this 28 degree uh, 29 degree centigrade temperature so mostly in indian region so based on the available literature or from the primary data set so this 20 uh, beyond 29 degree centigrade temperature is not much preferable for the species also so in case of uh, one of my colleague dr nimit will also talk about uh, this tuna there also if you see the primary if uh, i'll not go much into that but the primary data what uh, it will be discussed with you in the later so what we have seen that 29 degree centigrade beyond also uh, it is uh, in case of tuna also uh, it is not that much preferable so here uh, based on this uh, there the, this is the cartoon actually where uh, how this uh, phytoplankton then uh, rainfall and uh, the sardine actually uh, migration is uh, happening so i'll just uh, try to give you in the this cartoon so here you can see march to may so this is the time when fish move offshore when near shore temperature is very high so near shore temperature is becoming very high during this march to may however post may when this onset of monsoon is there this this green colors basically the patch of this chlorophyll concentrations so chlorophyll is there so that's why what happened this uh, june to july with the onset of monsoon peak spawning time and feast move to insert to feed not only feed it is also important for larval rearing 
so uh, this type of species this type of uh, species when they move in the breeding uh, area or in the spawning area so their larval uh, actually uh, rearing if for that purpose actually food is very much important so if phytoplankton is not there the larval rearing will not be that much pop, um, proper actually so that's why uh, with this peak spawning fish move in shore to feed for uh, faster for spawning for larval rearing therefore for their own food also and fish near shore zero uh, year basically uh, from early spawning appear in catch so uh, august time appear in catch so northward feeding happen uh, feeding uh, flowing blooms rapid grow so this northward feeding flowing blooms rapid grow so this uh, northward migrations of this uh, bloom actually happens during this september this is the post monsoon time and this is spring bloom time also so rapid growth of a high landing of this october also high landing uh, is uh, there and uh, high landing southward retreat so now this high landing is gradually in the month of november to december it is gradually going down towards this uh, actually uh, southern southern part and uh, high uh, high landing in uh, january and february high landing from late spawning spawning appear in in catch so this time also some um, uh, landings are high from late spawning those who are spawning uh, late so from that actually um, uh, this they are contributing in the landing so that means so this sardin is not at a time they are, are uh, actually spawning so it's a batch spawner so with the onset of monsoon it migrates towards the coast so with the favorable conditions if your rainfall is on time if your upwellings are on time and if the upwelling is popular in the you you, you just um, remember that uh, three boxes one two three uh, that boxes what i showed in the earlier uh, work also so if upwelling is happening in in right way so that uh, it uh, will in turn actually the chlorophyll concentration so will in uh, will be more so as the enrichment of nutrients are happening so chlorophyll concentrations will be more that means the phytoplanktons will be available so if phytoplanktons are more so fast if it is and if it is persisting but first persisting means uh, persisting from uh, means after june july august september also you can see here this persistence of phytoplankton is showing starting from june july and it is mostly there in august september october november also post november uh, then there is a tendency to Mm, uh, decrease so oh, so that means if batch spawners are there so from they continue to come in a batch by in batch different batches actually they will um, breed and uh, late spawner so those who are there in the last year so their uh, tendency uh, high landing will they will be co contributing in the uh, this time so uh, uh, this is in a uh, nutshell how these landings behaves and uh, how this chlorophyll concentrations and upwellings are are very much uh, important for uh, these uh, predictions of this particular species now here salinity and temperature along with physical indices uh, such as upwelling and mixed layer depths then uh, basically mld of the ocean help to propose a mechanism to temporal variability in the landing of uh, this oil oil sardine so upwelling and mixed layer depth mixed layer depth is also important if your mixing is in pop proper so if properly it is mixing so entrainment of this nutrient will be more so if a mixing is uh, less means mixed layer depth is le uh, low so your mixing is less that means your entrainment of nutrient is not happening properly so if nutrients and entrainment is uh, not happening then it the chlorophyll concentration means the phytoplankton bloom will be impacted 
So colder temperature and timely intense upwelling lead to the nutrient en enrichment to the surface water, which I am just uh, told you, which promotes the growth of phytoplankton and thereby food availability to the Indian oil sardine are found during years with surplus cash. This is the recent uh, work of uh, Hamza et al. 2020. So less saline surface water and uh, soling of MLD at these times could lead to the aggregations of fish at particular depth and thereby a good catch. The reverse mechanism such as more surface saline and water, warm temperature, downwelling or weak upwelling and less nutrient enrichment leads, leads to deficit in landing. Specific decal, decadal uh, oscillation, so it is happening in uh, PDO, mostly very much uh, popularly known as PDO. Atlantic uh, multi-decadal oscillations have a more pronounced impact on Indian oil sardine landing over the coast of uh, southeastern Arabian Sea then and so so according to them so uh, earlier there was a uh, uh, view that enso is also enso has a impact on this uh, species abundance actually so here according to their work so uh, they are also telling that pdo and atlantic uh, multi-decadal oscillations have more pronounced impact in this indian oil sardine landing so here uh, just uh, to give you the glimpse actually in ministry of earth sciences uh, basically the two institute is involved so inquis and uh, cmlre central marine living resource uh, so it is a uh, coaching based so uh, we have an mou with the mous is having an mou with NOAA working group basically fishery NOAA fishery uh, team so in collaboration so with them uh, their development of predictive capabilities of marine fisheries and harmful algal bloom under this program actually we are also trying to uh, um, uh, check whether based on that experimentally uh, some advisories on regular basis of whether uh, um, uh, we can start which can be later on based on the uh, R&D or uh, with a different institute later on can be operational. So firstly we are, are working on this uh, experimental advisory generations on, on sardine. So uh, there is a uh, system that is called CUBES continuous underway fish exemplar. So also oh, the regular basis uh, actually data collection, fisheries data collection from the georeference fish catch data is also very challenging. In, uh, so oh, uh, with that, uh, this cube sampling continuous underway fish exemplar also helps to understand where is the spawning ground what is the density of uh, these eggs available in the spawning ground. So from that we can get idea about the species abundance in this uh, region. So for that purpose the continuous, uh, continuous underway fish egg sampler uh, is also installed in one of the ministry, Minister of Earth Science uh, SIP that is basically FORB Sagar Sampada. So basically what it uh, uh, does actually it collects the sample uh, directly from the um, uh, ocean and uh, it can uh, it is having the facility to um, uh, to actually uh, collect from that uh, water sample directly the egg sampler can be uh, egg uh, can be collected so based on that actually uh, on board would this analysis mechanism is uh, also available presently in uh, sagar sampada so and uh, this is based on the real time analysis 
of uh, uh, plankton counter is also there one of the major uh, component of this uh, entire system so uh, with the help of that uh, that actually there is an idea to get a continuous data generate a continuous data which can be you can be analyzed for uh, this kind of species uh, actually management in later stage so oil sardine this is the work also uh, i will just give a uh, glimpse so oh, these are the popular or uh, this uh, spawning ground of oil sardine this sardinella uh, longiceps this are on the trivandrum balapad calicut kannur of balapad of uh, kannur these are the uh, area where actually this uh, spawning grounds are are uh, actually reported this work uh, was done by uh, similarly uh, cochin so here uh, this strong uh, the, the last for the operational generations of this advisory um, uh, for experimental purpose to understand that so we have divided this uh, entire upwelling zones what i showed you uh, in this uh, earlier uh, um, slide that uh, 1 2 3 up to 15 degree north actually that uh, um, upwelling zones so these upwelling zones for understanding betterly actually we have divided into grids different grids so nearly about 13 grids are there so strong temperature differentiations between the near shore and offshore so near shore temperature and the offshore temperature it is very much predominant high primary productivity and surface chlorophyll in june to september that time primary productivity is also high the primary productivity subsides after september so whereas meso zooplankton abundance increase and remain high in the post monsoon period So here, why uh, why this uh, kind of uh, in situ and uh, data collection is required? If in a long term uh, towards establishment and of uh, a robust system, which can an, on regular basis actually uh, can give uh, the predictions of uh, whether the coming year is uh, whether the sardine will be uh, available or not for that actually one um, framework is required and a, a, a continuous um, uh, modeling approach also need to be taken on board so for that purpose this is the schematic uh, one the sardine prediction system in an ecosystem approach so ecosystem indicators first of all we, we, if we want to actually uh, develop this type of uh, prediction system so we have to first uh, understand the conducive environment of that particular species as we are working in this uh, ocean it is not in a lake or in a pond that whether easily we can understand so we have to uh, have a, a, a strong um, network of in situ data collection and also uh, fisheries data collection not only the landing it is from the geo reference fish catch data is also also required from also required where are the spawning ground popular spawning ground and uh, what is the dynamics of that eco uh, that um, environmental parameters are changing so all those things need to be understand so for that purpose this ecosystem indicators actually a regular basis collections and linking with uh, the fish abundance is very much important so if those things are done in proper way based on that the relationships can be developed so for that purpose in this advanced uh, uh, modeling uh, uh, different modeling approaches are there so habitat modern suitability modeling approaches are there then uh, based on that actually data management is also a very much important part so regular basis uh, e we have to uh, depend on the archive data as well as we have to uh, store those data uh, in a proper way so that uh, the researcher can actually uh, mine all those data so data mining is also important so 
based on that actually stock assessment is also required anthropogenic stress assessment is also required and environmental and climate variability along with socio-economic uh, actually impact all those things need to be analyzed so based on that actually only with the development of this type of uh, of uh, small pelagic fish predictive capabilities can be developed it is i am showing in uh, this is in the aspect of sardine so e, this type of methodology is common for or, or other species also so e, we can Im, uh, actually use this one for the mackerel for the tuna or any sort of species of our interest which is having a strong impact on the socio-economy and the livelihood aspect so uh, for that purpose this type of frameworks and uh, uh, net networking is also very much important so here just uh, uh, to give you the more details so here you you can see the observations are here so observation based on the observations once this knowledge are there on the ecological indicators and fees have undone so the conceptual model based on habitat suitability or new uh, different numerical models are there in to end approach models are there so conceptual model can be developed and from that actually different fit models can be developed and this best fit model can be developed and this model will give a prediction so in the species level so once we are okay with this uh, we are starting this species level predictions we it is not completed so basically from that actually uh, we have to continue this kind of observations continuously because every year or you will get lot of more additional data which we, uh, we can use uh, in the model so if data more data based on on that actually uh, this uh, validations and the fine tuning so your model uh, uh, accuracy level will be increased so uh, what are the findings basically two covariates explained catch variations and improved predictions the 2.5 year average regional sst and precipitations over land uh, during june july is uh, uh, having impact the most significant relationships was between the sst covariate and the post monsoonal landing model with the second best co covariate precipitations over landing during the uh, the monsoon with a very minimum prediction uh, error so here uh, 2010 to 2013 with this uh, diagram it is showing that you see this june july august september actually this chlorophyll these are the chlorophyll concentrations here in this uh, axis so surface chlorophyll concentration and uh, these are the average monthly sst so during that time during this june july time this is also going down so the red one is the sst near shore and the black one is the sst offshore so there is a offshore sst is always high then uh, near shore sst and but the the trend is similar so there is a deepening during this monsoon so in 2011 also you can see here it is also there it is also here here also oh, it is uh, um, very much prominent so trends are, are similar so juvenile appears in the catch so highest somatic growth this is related to the uh, fish availability high somatic growth spawning uh, spawning happens so fish move offshore uh, during this uh, uh, february to march time so uh, for the understanding actually in better way in different diagram uh, diagram actually I, I this is this is plotted here so uh, uh, these are uh, the uh, little bit uh, details about this our uh, existing um, service uh, uh, this is the upcoming um, uh, actually um, service that i just uh, given you some uh, glimpses on indian oil sardine so how this fisheries oceanography with a proper uh, methodology of uh, this uh, sampling actually process and modeling approach 
the management not only this prediction system uh, for harvesting also it is also helps policy maker to take this type of decision to control all the the um, uh, fish stock uh, regionally so for that purpose this type of, of uh, organized kind of continuous regular or uh, um, uh, observations as well as modeling and prediction system um, is very much important if these are the operational part of fisheries oceanography so which are very much helpful for our, uh, for the uh, those who are, are now in the uh, research or in the study of this oceanography for fisheries oceanography they can think in that way so that in future ultimately this type of, of uh, robust prediction system can be developed for different species though it is a very time consuming and also a very uh, means uh, cost not at all cost effective but a regular with a regular framework it can be continued uh, in long way so uh, with this i'll just uh, end my uh, this presentation here so if you have any uh, questions put in the comment box so that in real time i'll i'll try to uh, answer some of these let me check What is the team temperature typical temperature of coal? Uh, what how does the predictions production of uh, chlorophyll and cyclone affect migration of of species? So uh, there is a question in Bay of Bengal in uh, what is the uh, chlorophyll? Uh, uh, what is the impact of this cyclone? in uh, in cold core core ad uh, uh, in uh, what is the impact uh, temperature yeah how does production of chlorophyll after a cyclone after migration of a species in the uh, bay of bengal so uh, it is basically uh, basically actually uh, what happened uh, so it is yesterday i was has uh, discussing so uh, yesterday i was discussing that uh, what is the impact of uh, uh, of cyclone on fish abundance so basically what happened um, this is i discussed yesterday on basis of this uh, phylin and uh, also amphan what happened if a cyclone on track is there in that cyclone track uh your enrichment of nutrient is happening so once this enrichment of nutrient is happening so it will uh, actually impact on that nutrient will come to the surface and these nutrients once it is in the surface so it will also uh, impact on the phytoplankton concentration so that enrichment of this uh, nutrient actually uh, increasing the phytoplankton concentration in this open ocean area it is uh, generally wherever the the track is there in that track uh, the chlorophyll concentrations will be automatically increased and in the bay of bengal region so there is a tendency that uh, fishermen always try uh, once this immediate after this uh, cyclone so whether they can and uh, move uh, towards uh, fishing or not so immediately after cyclone they they always move towards uh, this uh, open ocean and uh, in the cyclone track region 
because phytoplankton will grab after few you know, one to two days actually within one to two days phytoplankton bloom will start and because cloud will be very clear your ample light will be there so oh, phytoplankton will be more if phytoplanktons are more automatically fish will be attracted in that location and uh, so these are very much uh, means uh, lucrative place where fishermen um, are moving so in bay of bengal in the northern part obviously uh, we have seen that uh, this uh, uh, what is uh, that hilsa and also total uh, other species small pelagic species so both uh, impact uh, both is having a huge impact in the fish landing also uh, we have uh, data during the filing so in 2013 uh, so we have seen this uh, filing is also impacting the fish landing um, in after uh, this uh, fish landing of not only uh, hilsa other species also land phytoplankton for indian ocean bov and arabian sea yes there is a question can we have the climatological uh, charts of chlorophyll and phytoplankton for our indian ocean bov and arabian sea uh, so i think uh, there, there is a, a reference so uh, there is a uh, uh, climatological charts are available so mostly the mostly this was uh, publication from um, uh, nio however uh, i will give the reference of that particular in uh, this below the comment so i'll put this question that the actual reference is there so that reference actually i'll definitely post uh, that uh, it is available aver average chlorophyll climatological charts otherwise uh, there are, are uh, options like uh, chlorophyll generally what we do based on the satellite uh, based chlorophyll actually so uh, satellite based chlorophyll from the uh, sea weeps modis so we also generate uh, for our internal purpose also so uh, don't worry this reference uh, actually i'll put down in the down the comment so uh, th thank you very much so uh, let us uh, so complete it uh, complete uh, the uh, session here now so if you have any more question uh so that also you put okay i got a another question summer season and monsoon season rain after uh, summer season and monsoon season uh, rain after effect of sst so uh, i don't understand properly but what i understood that you want to see that uh, uh, what is the impact on sst during summer monsoon uh, so here in that slide itself one of the slide is there here so you can see this is the june july time and in this june july time basically uh, your sst is also going down so the red one is the uh, higher sst and uh, the red one uh, is the uh, near shore SST and the black one is the offshore SST. So near shore, this red one is the uh, near shore SST and this is the offshore SST and these are the plots during June, July, August, uh, September, basically monsoon, summer monsoon time. So and uh, this time actually there is a trend of deepening of SST so but the trend is that near shore sst is always uh, down than uh, offshore sst so the offshore is hotter than uh, near shore area because this time due to this rainfall the 
concentration that uh, um, rainfall actually uh, this SST is going down and also due to this upwelling time that chlorophyll also uh, uh, concentration is also um, going to high due to this upwelling also during that time. So I think uh, okay so also keep uh, posting in this uh, lecture if you have more queries so we will be uh, answering uh, in the comment part also. Thank you uh, very much for uh, supporting us and joining us in Incois official uh, channel on this A uh, FO uh, fisheries oceanography uh, courses and uh, stay tuned and uh, post to lunch also uh, there is a uh, class and uh, for this uh, session this batch actually this is my end class okay thank you very much uh, for our, uh, joining thank you very much